Hey guys, how are you? I'm Connor. I'm Brittany. Thanks so much for joining us. And today we're gonna do a Q and A. Can we talk for a second about the volume <laughs> of our voices? Because sure. I can work on matching you. <laughs> I feel like I'm really toning it down. Today we're gonna do a Q and A. That's why people are saying I have mannerisms like you, just because I'm not speaking as loudly as I normally do. Well, I can speak louder. Would this be better? Oh no, no. <laughs> excited because this is our fifth video in and we've just gotten so many questions. So many amazing questions. Like incredible, seriously. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very, very much. We got so many questions that we really felt compelled to put some together in a Q&A. Today I think we're just doing a short seven Q&A. And there's also some questions that we love so much we'd love to elaborate more on and, and dedicate their own video to them. So we will be answering some questions there as well. The first question is, do you ever check in with the other person before connecting sexually with with another person or do you just go for it if it feels right? So the first thing I think we noticed in this was the specifics about sexually. We are taught to think that way, that sexual connection is different from another type of connection. As we talked about before, if that's serving us, great. And if it's not, do we need to distinguish? We talk a lot about intimacy and intimacy is important with us and intimacy is sometimes sexual and it's sometimes not. Intimacy means a lot of different things for us and in no area of that spectrum are we requiring each other to check in. Generally, when we're attracted to someone, we're excited about it and we wanna share, so we do. And if we wanna connect further with this person that we are attracted to, we're excited about it, so we wanna share. And we really try to share from a place of excitement. We've noticed that sharing from a place of fear, a place of obligation, yeah. a place of shame, a place of guilt, never Never really feels good and for that's not what we're going for. It's really important to us to feel like we are our own two people. Yes, we're relating and yes, we love spending a lot of time together, but we're also free humans. We really encourage each other and ourselves to make our own choices that feel right for us. We never want to set any rules or obligations on how we need to do something and in this case, share or communicate with one another. I consider it a privilege that Connor wants to share what's exciting him with me and when he does, it's great. And when he doesn't share something, that's great too. He has his reasons and it all, it's always working out. Question number two, how do you steer clear of STDs and impregnation? Great question. We got a few variations of this question, so thank you for asking. I will probably have kids or a child someday, but right now I'm not super jazzed about that, so I do prepare for that. Right now I have an IUD and I've had different forms of birth control at different times. Our bodies are super important to us. Oh my gosh, we're obsessed <laughs> with our health and well-being. It's, it's what we're all about, our yeah. physical health, our yeah. mental health everything. Having dis-ease in our body is not something we're interested in. If we're connecting with people sexually, we are putting our health first, we're putting our body's health first. Connor, you said in a recent video of ours that we are really interested in being healthy, full people and connecting with other healthy, full individuals. Mm. And that goes for physical health in this realm as well. We're very open with the people we're connecting with and it's important that we have communication about all the things that are important to us. And keeping our bodies really healthy is very important to us. Although we connect with a whole lot of people, we're not really in situations physically where an STD would come up as a potential issue. Right, we're not just like having intercourse all over the place right. or something. When we are, we take the precautions that we feel are healthy and safe in those particular situations. And I think most foundationally, that means communication. And healthy communication is the best way to have a healthy relationship. That means mentally, emotionally, and physically. And we love connecting with people in so many ways that if any part of something feels sketchy, it doesn't feel urgent for us to right. push it to what we've been taught is the next the next level. Right. We get so much intimacy just from just from this or just from looking at a person or just from smiling at a person. There's never this like, oh, I I got here so now I'm going to get here so now I'm going to get here and then I'm going to have sex. No. It's, it's not at all like the end all and be all of connection for us. We really enjoy it, but we really enjoy a lot of things and it's not a place that, that has to result in order for us to feel like we've made a connection. I know that this is somewhat of a tangent, but I just want to mention because we are on this fun topic that you and I even don't have a ton of intercourse with one another. 
we are super into a lot of different things sexually and a lot of things turn us on and there's so many fun ways to play around with stuff and we'll talk about this in other videos too where it's not always just you know like feel the boob <laughs> finger <laughs> to touch the penis now have sex right we spend a whole lot of time connecting in other ways and we love to be intimate pretty much every single day and sometimes more than once a day i mean in this particular realm but it doesn't always mean that we're having intercourse. It doesn't mean that we're only having intercourse. So thanks for that question. It's fun to talk about. Sweet. Onward and upward. Oh, I like this question. Question number three. We got a few variations of this question. We're really excited to answer it. It's a really it. great question. It's a great question. Don't you think that eventually you will end up being monogamous? No. No. It makes sense that that question would come up. Maybe people are seeing us as right now just kind of experimenting and playing around and then eventually like we're going to keep getting melded into each other and never want to be apart. But the thing is, like, I never want to be apart already from Brittany. And we've <laughs> said before that we would make perfect monogamous candidates. Yeah, we Like, would. we're so set up to be a monogamous couple. And so it's a testament to how much we really want to be non-traditional, non-monogamous, that we are doing it because we're so in love and love spending time together. <laughs> I'm not one to say I'll never do insert thing right here. i'm so open to anything unfolding that feels right for me me too that being said freedom is something that has always felt right to me and i just see myself continuing to go further and further down that path and this feels like ultimate freedom in the realm of relationships in terms of just being really true to myself and whatever i want and knowing that changes every day and being really honest and open in all my communication and pursuing all my desires. The longer we do this, the better it is, the easier it is. The more fun it is. The more fun it is. And the closer I feel to you, the more oh, excited about you yeah. and your body and your sexiness I am, the more attracted I am to you, the more I wanna spend time with you. So feeling like I have fallen in love every single day mm is incredible and i and i'm not saying you can't have that in other relationships i'm not at all i'm just saying that i know what we're doing right now with each other works so well i can't imagine doing anything else question number four what do our families think of our lifestyle well luckily we've been weirdos for quite some time <laughs> <laughs> so i think at this point our families have really <laughs> gotten used to it i think i could basically say anything like hey, I'm doing whatever, and then you're like, oh, okay, well, that, that makes, makes sense. sense for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel totally supported by my family, and I have felt that way for a very long time. I feel the exact same way. I could say pretty much anything at this point, and if I was excited about it and passionate about it, I was smiling about it, they would say, you go for it. That's awesome. I will say that I didn't always feel the level of comfort with certain family members of mine in being my full self, as I do right now, and it's an ever-unfolding journey. But what I found really helped with that, being me and being steady about it and having no shame about it and sharing openly about it when it felt right for me and also not sharing when it didn't feel right for me. And within that also opening up and learning more about my family and loved ones and showing that I really love and accept them just as they are. Question number five, what do fights or disconnections look like between you two? What have they looked like with your other previous partners and how have you changed? Such a good question. We both were really excited when we read this question. So excited, in fact, that we're gonna do a bigger video on this topic and staying open, but we do wanna answer it here as well. Maybe I can start with what it looked like with previous partners. When things would come up in previous partnerships, especially my longest one, which was 12 years in a monogamous relationship and I was married, we didn't really fight. So like this thing, you know, yelling at each other, but we really did disconnect and pull away. And what that looked like for me a lot of the time was drinking or doing drugs. And that's not part of my life anymore. So when something comes up between us, I'm not running off and getting a six pack at the store. I'm really trying to stay present, not just with Brittany, but really with myself, with myself first. Why am I feeling frustrated? Why am I feeling angry? Why am I feeling hopeless or scared? Whatever the emotion is, whatever the part is that's active at that moment, to tap into that place and just to share it. This is what I'm feeling. 
it, it's amazing what that can do and how that can bring you closer. I feel like I've been on a personal growth journey for about a decade. I was just reflecting this morning. So I've had a lot of time developing myself and how I communicate in relationships. Before that, for sure, when I was in high school, and <laughs> I did have fights and, and bigger disconnections. But I would say with my relationships within the past five years or so, I've really had a greater level of self-awareness and my partners have as well. And coming together from that that place and keeping in mind the intention and the goal that you have I've found is really helpful and we don't have any rules so we can't say hey you did this thing and we said we weren't gonna do that because we never said that and so we really <laughs> we really get a good chance to check well I'm frustrated at you because you did this thing oh but it's okay that you did that thing <laughs> so what am I really frustrated at? there's yeah. always something underneath always always with frustration hopelessness anger and it's really, really awesome. It's a, an opportunity for us to dig deeper inside ourselves when that stuff comes up. So I wouldn't say that we ever fight. I would say that at different times, maybe a part of us feels like we need to disconnect just a little bit to take care of ourselves. But we even talk about that. If I'm feeling that way, I can say, Brittany, I'm feeling like part of me wants to disconnect right now. I don't really want to, like I wanna stay close to you, but I'm just noticing this part, I'm having a hard time. And from that space, I feel like Brittany's able to support me, and give me like, the love. Connor, and that really makes sense. I can really sense. understand that. Was that five? One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, go. Question six. Do you foresee your sexual boundaries changing in the future? For example, if you decide to have children. Sexual boundaries. It's an interesting language. What does that mean? I don't feel like I have boundaries, so I'm not quite sure how they could change. <laughs> and that's not, I don't think when Brittany says that or when, I, when I'm saying it's interesting language that we mean it in a condescending way at all. No. It's just noticing this kind of stuff. I could see how things might shift with another little human in our lives. We're going to have a lot of energy that we want to give to this other little human and, and that makes a lot of sense. We really love living moment by moment. We find that we love connecting with others. I don't imagine these things are going to change and we're also really open to anything unfolding as it makes sense. Question number seven. How do you differentiate because the lines seem to blur, for example, from the friends with benefits situation? So I think what this is getting at is how do we differentiate between people in our lives like friends, friends with benefits, lovers, Etc. We don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we, we relate with humans in the way that feels best for us at the time that we're relating with them, and, it and that's it. It changes. It shifts. It does. It does all kinds of these things. There's a little dance here. Does a dog paddle? Well, mine's never done a doggy paddle. Sometimes, but they. They might. But Connor's paddles. Mine paddles. Like a dog. Things are different all the time. If we put labels on these things, that's that's cool. That's fine. But it means that we have set them up to be a certain thing. Oh, yeah. And that then they fall into this category. And then when they shift, then we have to relabel them. And then they're this other thing. Ooh, yeah. But if they're not, if you're never really labeling this stuff, uh -uh. then it's more fluid. Then you don't have to worry about, oh, this is my friend. I don't know. Do I want to move it into a friends with benefits oh, situation? Oh, yeah. Am I ready for that yet? No. Nah, like, it's all good. If you're ready, you're, it's going to happen. This is a human being. Today, I want to go to the park with this human being and talk with them. So I'm going to ask them if they want to. We'll see what they want to do. We'll come together, we'll figure out something that works for both of us for today. And then tomorrow, I wanna kiss this human being. I wanna cuddle with them, I wanna lay with them, I wanna love them. Maybe, maybe I do right now, but maybe when I get there, I'm like, <laughs> no, I do not want to do that. <laughs> and it's the same process either way. It's connecting with them, it's connecting with ourselves, it's sharing what you want, hearing what they want negotiating, coming together. And so it, it's a great question. These have all been great questions. Amazing questions, you guys. Thank you so, so very much. Thanks for the opportunity to reflect more. We're gonna keep putting out videos, answering your questions in both extended form and more condensed versions like these Q and A's. So we really encourage you to post in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Would you do it to a oh, baby? Oh, what about a kiss? Would you do it to I a baby? I wouldn't do it to a baby. I wouldn't either. Aww. Aww. I'd probably do that to a baby. I'd do that to a baby too. <laughs>